between Agistil and whoop, Mighty. Let's go ahead and start it up. There we go. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Aegis as the pink Zerg. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Mighty. Mighty going for a 1-1-1-ish build with a Vulture drop. And really hurting Aegis' early game economy. Aegis not really having an answer for a mech play. And I think I'm going to refer to the honorable Day9 in this as... I know his opinion versus mech is actually to never go Ultralisks. His logic being, when you think about mech and siege tanks and all that sort of thing, they're good at outloading a massive amount of damage very rapidly. And by building Ultralisks, you're basically maximizing the efficiency of the Terran army, right? Because you're creating this big unit that costs a lot of money that can't really breach those lines. So it's, anyway, his opinion is get more Zerglings, get more Hydralisks, get more Mutalisks. Just get bulk, get meat to deal with that, to follow it up. Drone trick here for Agistol. I'm wondering if we're going to see another... That was a very effective game one. I wonder if we're going to see another 1-1-1 out of Mighty or something along the lines of it. Is that Supply Depot out of position? Supply Depot, I think one pixel off, so Zerglings could come around that corner. Oh, maybe not. I think he's going to plant that Supply Depot in the upper corner. And this is... Yeah. Actually, no. Kind of double gap. We'll see. We will see. Agistil sending out two drone scouts. One, to, just in case the NSV is there, I think one to get that natural expansion at the other to provide actual scouting information. So 12 hatch from him. And he is going to be able to get his initial scout out in the proper direction. He's going to come across Mighty's base in short order. And we do see a refinery plopping down. So again, I think we are going to see similar mech play. I'm wondering if it's going to be a follow-up with shuttle dropship or if it's just going to be, yeah, again, 111. With the Wraith, Vulture, and Marine to follow. Drone able to get the scout in, though. Doing damage on that SCV that's trying to build that barracks. First Marine being produced. That drone has now forfeit its life. It's going to be stuck in here, barring a miracle. Still might be able to cycle back around and maybe get that get a kill on that SCV. Mighty getting that factory was... Well, might be able to get that SCV. Is he going to cycle back around? Nope. Oh, actually canceling. He's going to try to make that a scout. Still freaking out on that. Doing the uh, SCV Disco. Near that natural expansion. Here's the thing. If he moves up with that... Oh, okay. He's going to try to... Maybe, maybe he's going to try to mineral walk his way back across. I thought you actually had to... Nope, he's going to lift. Okay. Interesting. Drone gets wiped out finally. I think he saw the factory. Saw the gas. Knows what he's up against. Three hatch play. Again from Agisol... Just two Zerglings this time, has an Extractor up. Now that he knows what he's up against in Game 1, I'm wondering if he has the build order to cope with it. Two more SCVs to get the full cadre. I keep saying cadre these days. Get the full complement of SCVs. There's that initial Vulture being produced to deal with early game Zerglings. Curious if you will see the classic Starport to follow. Looks like instead... Huh. Instead, we're seeing a defensive command center being built on the low ground. And an armory to get some Goliaths out. Hydelsten is only about halfway finished for Aegis. He does is getting this creep colony at the natural. However, I don't think this creep colony is going to be up in time before that vulture is already at the main. <laughs> and can honestly just walk by this creep colony. And still get a handful of drone kills at that natural expansion before he can just walk into the main. Oh! Not if it dies before it is able to get through, though. First Hydralisk on the way. No drones dead yet. One Zergling taken care of. And Mighty actually is going to end up losing this Vulture before it was really able to get a lot of the damage it was capable of executing. Maybe he gets... Is he going to get one? No. No kills yet. Still trying to work on the, the drones on gas and ends up dying. Nice defense from Aegis. So Mighty not quite dedicating any place. So gets lots of scouting information, but really doesn't get anything else. 
Second factory plopping down. Machine shop is there. Level 1 weapons on the way, and a first siege tank being produced. Double machine shop. Hydralisk speed being upgraded. The Zergling is going to wander around here to try to disrupt this command center as long as possible. Marine is out. Try to provide some support against this. Bunker being built, although there's only a single Marine. Oh, and actually, Mighty working. If he just... Okay, there. Yeah, if he just stood and attacked that Zergling, I think he would have been better off than trying to micro it. That bunker is only going to have a single marine in it. I don't know if that's worth it. Siege check being upgraded. Seeing that Hydralis stand down. And Hydralis starting to flood out of Aegis's base. I think he has an opportunity to win this here. Because his economy was not all that disrupted. He's producing a lot of Hydralisks. And if you think about game... What is it? Game 3? Game 2? Against Ninjob? This is even smaller attack force. Like, yeah, you'll have siege tech... But one siege tank versus this many Hydralisks diving in right now, it's not enough. And only a single Marine in that bunker otherwise. It's down. That Marine's dead. Aegis might have done it. He's got a focus fire down this Goliath. He's also got a focus fire down critically that siege tank. That siege tank being linebackered by those SCVs. He can't quite get around. Only three Hydralisks left. Do not get the siege tank. Nice defense by Mighty. And that was with not a lot on the ground. Those SCVs linebackering are heroes. Coming back in. Does get the Siege Shank this time. Should be another Siege Shank to follow shortly. There is a Goliath there to provide some defense. Marine gets taken out. Still more Hydralisks pouring through. Now Mighty backing out of his natural expansion. It's not game yet. SCVs... Moving their way back across, trying to provide some disruption. Trying desperately to defend against these Hydralists. You can see the reinforcements flooding across the map for Aegis. Another Goliath down. I'm looking for another Siege Tank. Siege Tank about halfway finished there. More SCVs getting wiped out the natural expansion. Aegis focusing most of his efforts there. He needs to really get, yeah, concentrated fire. More Hydralists pouring up. If he can get on top of these factories and take these Siege Tanks out, that'll be the critical component. Siege tanks moving to the back line. If they can siege in this back area, that will provide a nice defensive structure. But this is a lot of area exposed, and he needs to be careful with these siege tanks now. Hydralis actually opting to just dive into these siege tanks. Only three Hydralis left. Two of them only making it on top of these siege tank group repair from the SEVs, and I think this might have gotten cleaned up. Natural expansion has been lifted off. Did that? Yeah. Lifted off and back into the corner. Mighty pounding away at the Hydralists that are here left. Goliath being produced, which would be critical just in case there was a follow-up with Mutalisks. But Lair is not even upgraded quite yet for Aegis. It started just a second ago. He still has a lot of Hydralists on the ground. And he still can provide a good amount of disruption at this natural expansion. He's getting his third. This is going to put him economically ahead, comparatively. But he has not won the game yet. Now, we know Aegis likes going for the throat. So, is he going to follow this up? It looks like he's actually droning rather hev heavily as a follow-up. Trying to do damage against that command center in the upper area. He needs to be a little bit careful controlling these Hydralisks on the low ground. Drone actually going to take another expansion. So, Aegis opting to try to get a sizable economic lead to follow this up. Which is smart, I think, versus the mech play. Layers down. Evolution Chamber working. Is he going to go for Lurker Aspect? Or is he going to go for a Lair? It's kind of the follow-up. Mighty with four Siege Tanks, two Goliaths. Re-establishing his natural expansion. Level 1 armor on the way. Level 1 weapons. Level 1 armor. For Aegis on the opposite side of the map. Good drone saturation here. He's taking that 12 o'clock base. Mineral only is up, but is not yet mining. Pretty solid dr drone count overall, though. Aegis in a much better position. Does have his Queen's Nest developing. If he can get this command center... If he can run in, get the command center in the red, 
might be able, might actually be able to sneak this with a queen. We'll see if he opts to do this, or if he's going to go for more. Yeah, he's going straight to hive. Now my hope is, is he still goes for that dark swarm plague combo rather than the ultralisks. But he might be economically ahead enough that if he does opt for ultralisk play, he still might have just the raw bulk to make it work. We will see. SCV out and about trying to get what scouting information it can. I think it is going to find that 12 o'clock base. Siege Tank's creating a nice defensive perimeter with these Goliaths. This is a sizable Goliath attack force, and this is where it can be very challenging for Zerg player. Yeah, SCV sees that. Because, okay, when do you produce what to be able to deal with the mech, right? Same thing, I almost feel like it's like a mirror-ish of TVP play against similar, you know, timing builds and whatnot. Two more factories you can plop down for a total of five Goliaths being produced in earnest. A lot of drones out for Agistol. Hive Tech now up. Now, what does he opt for here? Still producing Hydralisks overall. Looking for that Hive Tech. Trying to keep an eye on it. He's opting for the Adrenal Glands, which is a critical component. And he is, in fact, opting for an Ultralisk Cavern to follow this up. Which actually might be okay considering the smaller Siege Tank count at the moment. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Mighty's doing a pretty good job of macroing what he's got, but he is going up four bases to two. And this is three gas Zerg, which is when Zerg starts getting scary. Hydralisk's planted there to dissuade any additional scout. Aegis has all sorts of resources to use, but he needs to spend them. Mighty moving out. Single Hydralisk being critical. Now, did he save the larva to start producing units? Bunch of Zerglings being produced. Ultralisk Cavern is going to be finished momentarily. It looks like Aegis is actually trying to save resources to get several Ultralisks out as soon as he's able to. Researching the Anabolic Synthesis to go ahead and get speed to get on top of those siege tanks rapidly. Handful of Hydralisks moving out. Question is, will it be in time? Units coming to reinforce from the south. Hydralisk chasing that SCV, unfortunately. But yeah, right now, most of the army's here, and it needs to be in a pincer, a pincer position someplace else to engage this mech army. Three Ultralisks on the way. Siege tank sieging on the low ground across this mineral only. Aegis repositioning his army out to the right, which is precisely what he needs to do. He needs to yeah, have some counterattack angle. To be able to engage. He's got a big economy. It's going to come down to being able to engage on top of this very powerful mech army. Level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. Does have equivalent upgrades. He's got the tools to do it. But is he going to be able to execute is the question. Sunken Colony slowing this mech army down a bit. But not for long. But it's giving critical time to get Ultralisks out here. And allow that Ultralisk upgrade to, to kick in. Here it comes. Flood from above. Zerglings mostly getting cleaned up. Fortunately coming from one concentrated angle. Overlords sweeping in from ahead, trying to distract the Goliaths. That's not happening. Hydralis is pressing in from behind. I think Aegis has done it. Looks like he has enough army that it is sweeping through this mech and obliterating mighty standing army. Doesn't have a lot left standing. But the natural expansion is completely exposed. And Aegis diving in with what he's got to try to wreak as much damage as he possibly can. He's still got a gigantic economy and can continue to just produce units and flood this. These tanks are not sieged in a defensive position. Overlords getting distracted, or sorry, Goliath's getting distracted by those overlords in that back corner rather than helping the defense at the natural expansion. And the Ultralist is now working on that command center. They have it in the red. Ultralist might want to back off right now. As that command center is lifted off, group prepare to try to keep it alive. So all Aegis... I think Aegis will win this as long as he keeps up with his macro at this stage. The main... Still decent amount of minerals there. 
for Mighty. Thing is, his mech is so expensive. So expensive. So are Ultralisks, though. Aegis getting a big army out here, though. Looks like he's also transferring a lot of drones to make sure he's got decent saturation. Also, the armor upgrade kicking in. We do have some mines in front of this mech force. And uh, slow, slow vultures making their way to the 12 o'clock location. Handful of Hydralisks or something should be able to deal with that. That will soften those Ultralisks up. In the mid game, those drones, oof. Vultures feasting here, the natural expansion of the 12 o'clock location. That's triggering all sorts of Zerglings and everything up. Else, kind of flood to this location. Vultures actually, I love Vultures as a response to this because it does clear out a lot of those Zerglings, softens up the Ultralisks. But you need map control and you need, yeah, to get those Vultures out there to plant the mines in open field to make that really work. Zergling trying to clear some mines there on the front, not quite able to do so, but at least makes Aegis aware that's out there. Mighty moving at, rolling out with another sizable mech army. While Aegis's units are mostly, although he's got all these Ultralis here, mostly out of position. Some more mines being planted to the north. This is actually one of those, also those dangerous uh, territory where sometimes you'll see a spire planted down and a quick tech switch from Zerg when they have enough economy to do it. Aegis supply capped at 100, but he's still about 20 supply ahead. Plus, that's in very hefty units. Still needs to get good engagements. Ultra's getting right on top of this. And yeah, he's just got too much meat for Mighty to come back into this. Once again, losing his army. And here's the thing. Mighty not taking out even an expansion with that. And not able to secure an expansion of his own, I think that might be the defining moment. Ultralisks getting wiped out here on the front door. Some overlords getting a little bit over ambitious. Vultures look like they are going to get some drone kills here to the 12 o'clock. Some of them flooding their way back. We see Hydralisks or anything being produced here? No. More Ultralisks being produced, but mighty doing what he can. More Ultralisks flooding into this natural expansion. Aegis is like, go ahead, send your units up there. I'm going to go ahead and dive in on your, ult your tanks at the natural expansion. He can resupply and re-clear out that 12 o'clock base when he feels like it. There's only one siege tank left on this defense. So honestly, I feel like game two very solidly looked like it might go to Aegis in the turnaround. Ultralisks in the main, not where you want them to be. A mine clearing out that one Ultralisk. This Ultralisk is a little bit low on health. SEVs heroically battling this Ultralisk. This reminds me of like something out of Aliens right here. Mighty still trying to fight this. But honestly, I feel like a this is Aegis's game to lose. Ultralisk kind of looking at SEVs that time. Making their way back around. Aegis economy a little bit a little bit debilitated here. I'm trying to figure out where his drones are. Not very well saturated here. So a bit hurting in his follow-up, but he does have 50 drones someplace. Vulture is trying to get out in position to draw these Ultralisks away, get some mines to soften up any sort of reinforcements that might be able to come across. More drones being resaturated by Aegis. So Mighty has one more shot at this, maybe. I don't think he can take a third, though. Finally getting Vulture speed. More Ultralisks and more Zerglings starting to flood out. And honestly, as long as these camp outside the natural expansion of Mighty, I don't know that there's a lot he can do to kind of press back in this. Those mines doing work against these Ultralisks. Aegis doing a pretty good job of keeping his mineral count low off five expansions. And again, the Siege Tank count just plummeting. I think this might be GG right here. At least, if I was Mighty, this is where I'd be like, nope, it's not happening. Two more siege tanks, there's GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna move on to game three. Each player has one apiece. Thanks for listening.